Howdy on Welcome Back Slives. I think it's time we play a little Seven Days to Die. Alright. Um, I think I want to see how close I am to making the copter. I definitely have a lot of points here. My advanced engineering is all the way up. A uh, grease monkey would be the last point. There we go. That's what I needed to make the copter. I still have three more points, man. I use stun batons. Deployed weapons. Uh, none of those can help me. Physician thing might be useful, but don't really do hidden so much. Uh, I don't use a, a melee. Oh no, this is quick hands. Look at that. One-handed melee attack speeds. Melee weapon, though. Does that count for punches? Running gun can be helpful. Improve your hip firing accuracy and run faster while reloading any ranged weapon. Uh, of course, I got points into the brawler here. Um, I do use brawler quite a bit. I guess we could put some more points into fortitude. And machine gunner, of course. Those are my two main weapons. Uh, you know what? Let's uh, throw a point in there. There we go. There's my points. More things to cook and whatnot. Uh, okay, so what do we gotta have to make the uh, gyro? All right. Uh, let's start with the accessories. I need parts, headlight, pipes, parts, and spring. So I need headlight, parts, parts, pipe, spring. Done. That was easy enough. Alright. I also forgot to look to see what the next... The chassis. I need 125 steel, uh, 25 duct tape, 40 leather. And a lot more electrical parts than I currently have. Uh, I've got the leather. Um, I've got the duct tape. Uh, I do not have the forged steel. I have some of the forged steel. Can I get like another hundred forged steel on here? I can't. Oh man. Wow. I need more iron. I need more electric parts. Looks like I'm uh, gonna go do some wandering for some parts then. I was thinking that uh, my Whoa. scavenging. <laughs> I took my hand off my mouse there for a second. Um, where I climb up to the tops of those buildings to hit their stashes, might be easier if I could just fly a helicopter and land on top of the buildings. Um... I wonder if this water place here might have some control systems in it that would be good for me to uh, pull apart. Oh, oh, it's like, oh, I don't want to. Too bad. We're going in and doing it. All right. So, 
Uh, I guess I've got a couple of things to talk about today. Um, I am not punching my way through a 7,000 door. That's ridiculous. Because that was much easier. Uh, so, I guess first off, I watched Cruella this weekend. Uh, it was pretty good. I was surprised. Um, I rather enjoyed it. I didn't think I would. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Dalmatian movies, any of them. Live action, cartoon, whatever. So, I wasn't expecting a whole lot from this, but, uh, yeah, it was more like, um, kind of like, uh, Devil Wears Prada mixed with a uh, little bit Ocean's Eleven kind of idea. Um, uh, kind of a revenge movie. Uh, and, uh, I mean, the, uh, the Dalmatians, there were Dalmatians in it, but for the most part, there were not Dalmatians in it. <laughs> uh, it was more about, um, Estella, who is Cruella, um, wanting to be a fashion designer. And, um, and her mother being murdered, uh, when she was a child. <laughs> uh, it was pretty good. I was surprised. Um, I rather enjoyed it. We, uh, we decided to, no. So my sister asked my niece what she wanted to do, and she said she wanted to watch a movie. And I said, ooh, I want to watch Cruella. And, uh, so then the niece said, well, she didn't want to watch Cruella. She wanted to watch Luca, which I also hadn't seen. And, uh, so we watched Luca first. And, uh, I don't know if there's any... I honestly don't remember what's in these big plants like this. It's been so long since I've been in one. I didn't bring very many bullets either. And, um... So, I, I didn't think Luca was that great. Uh, Pixar is very hit or miss for me. I mean, obviously it's not geared toward my particular age group. Um, but sometimes they're really good. Uh, like, I really like the Incredibles movie. Uh, I really liked... I think Wally is Pixar. I really like Wally. Um, the Toy Stories are usually pretty good. I haven't seen the newest one yet. Which I know is like four years old, five years old, something at this point. Uh, my sister hates the Toy Story movies, so she won't watch them with her children. Which is probably why I haven't seen it. <laughs> um, but Luca was kind of just meh. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it was fun for people, but I it just wasn't anything special, I guess. It wasn't a bad movie, it just wasn't anything special. Um, uh, Luke is, uh, this kid's a sea monster, so he's just a fish person. Um, uh, more like, um, more like a, a creature from Black Lagoon, right? Not a mermaid, kind of. That's the difference, I guess. And, uh, I thought you were dead. 
You just laid there. And, um, so, uh, when they go out of the water, they turn to look like a human. And so he meets another kid, um, who's the same kind of creature, but he lives on an island and doesn't seem to have any parents, and they don't ever really bring it up. Uh... And, uh, basically they go into town because they find a picture of a Vespa and they think it's the most awesome thing ever. It's Italian. Um, the whole, the whole thing is Italian. It takes place in a small Italian fishing village, fishing city, I guess. Um, and, uh, so they find out that, uh, this kid has a nice Vespa, and that uh, he got his money for the Vespa from winning a triathlon that the city puts on, but it's a weird triathlon where it's swimming, biking, and pasta eating. Uh, and then they meet a girl there who's human, who, um, who was disqualified from the race because she couldn't stop throwing up after the pasta section. Because the pasta section is in between the swimming and the biking. <laughs> and uh, and so they uh, enter as a team, because you can enter as a team when taking each of the legs. And uh, and then, of course, you know, they have a tiff and they split up. And, um, and then they all, you know, come back together in the end and live happily ever after. Um, so it was very... There wasn't really anything interesting about them being sea monsters, uh, which would have made it a better movie for me. They, uh, and uh, it was just, I mean, it was just that. It was basically just a kid relationship movie, right? And uh, I hear you. But I do not see you. I... So until you show up, I'm just going to be here dismantling these electronics. I'll keep an eye on the door, though, so you don't get me. Uh, so yeah, so that was, uh, that was the movies I managed to watch this weekend. I had a, a power outage for like a day and a half last week. Um, and so it really threw off everything. Um, so my... I want to say Wednesday night is when it started, and uh, so then I didn't get to upload my Wednesday stuff, and then um, it didn't come back on until way late Thursday, so I didn't get to even record on Thursday, um, and then I had to upload the video I was uploading on Wednesday, Thursday night instead, and, um, you know, so last week was, I didn't get a chance to do much of nothing. I was catching up on work and stuff, and uh, uh, so we did watch those two movies Friday night, I guess. Um, and then, uh, ha ha ha, yeah. Uh, I did play a, a new survival game for a little tiny bit that came out last week, um, Beyond Contact. Uh, seems pretty cool so far. Um, I'll admit it's a it's a permadeath game, so once you die, you're dead. And I have died a couple of times uh, because the first time uh, I did not understand how to do anything. Somehow I missed the instructions on how to. I still don't think there are instructions um, on how to do things, and so. I couldn't figure out how to craft. I knew it was a crafting survival game. That's why I bought it. I love those games. And, uh, and so I, the whole first time, I eventually died of um, cold because I couldn't figure out how to build heat. Yeah, it's a space game. Uh, I mean, it's on a planet, but it's a sci-fi game, kind of. So you um, land your expeditionary 
the reconnaissance uh, crew crashes onto the planet because you don't land. Um, that they've been sent to, and and then you're trying to figure out what happened to the rest of your crew while collecting supplies from various um, environments, and uh, and it does require resources from multiple environments to even get heat turned on, um, which I think is a little shady, because uh, you you don't have you don't have uh, food, oxygen, uh, health kits. You find some here and there as you're going around. Uh, and so having to move around amongst the fauna and flora that are deadly while not having supplies but not being able to do anything about it. Uh, I mean, I don't even have a weapon. Uh, I don't think in any of the versions I've played yet I haven't managed to get my hands on or create a weapon yet, although there are some in the game. I just haven't managed it yet. So it's been pretty... What little bit I managed to play complex. Uh, not complex, but I don't know what the word I want. It's uh, tricky. Uh, but I liked it. I liked what I've played so far. I definitely, when I get a chance, will want to play again. Obviously, what happens is I've got uh, limited free time, like everyone. And uh, I... I've been trying to uh, get better gear on uh, the one game I think we're probably about to quit playing, uh, which is Outriders, and uh, I've talked about that before. It's pretty fun. Uh, it's a little glitchy to run, which I don't appreciate. Uh, I feel like there should be... At this point, these games need to stop being so glitchy. Um, a lot of the big games I have purchased in the last couple years have been way glitchier than a lot of the early access titles I play, uh, which is ridiculous. I should not, I should not pay eighty dollars for a AAA title to have it crash every fifteen minutes, right? Um, and. Uh, uh, Death Loop was another one. I played a tiny amount of Death Loop this week. Um, it didn't crash. Because uh, previously it was crashing all the time. And then they patched and new uh, drivers came out for my video card. And between the two of them, I didn't crash at all last time. And even, even Outriders uh, ran better after their last patch and video card driver update so that's cool uh i'm less worried about the outriders crashes because a lot of their stuff is um auto saved pretty frequently uh but the like i'm oops i didn't mean to hit that with my axe um like, without writers, you know, you pick up an item, it's saved. You're going to have it, probably, when you log back in. Whereas, Deathloop only saves when you enter or e exit a zone, I believe. And, uh, so, yeah, uh, that one uh, is a little trickier when it comes to crashing. Because then suddenly you don't have your last two hours worth of work, basically. And I don't appreciate that, for sure. What do I do on electronic parts? Oh yeah, 177. I got plenty there. What about iron? 1,023. That seems pretty good. Hmm. Huh. Okay. 
guess I should have known that. Remember, you can get into the waterworks stash easily by going through that. Alright, let's get this back to my base. Uh, and then, I I'm still not done with the Witcher book. Um, you think that all that time I had to read, I couldn't bring myself to read. I played an old 3DS game because I keep my handhelds charging all the time. So, uh, I played uh, Galactics, Galact Puzzle Quest Galactics, something like that. Uh, that's what I did while the power was off. Um, so I should have gotten way farther in the Witcher book, but I just could not bring myself to read it. Uh, not because I was didn't want to, but because I have this thing where if I don't have a choice, I don't want to do something. And since there's no power, and I had no choice, I didn't want to do it. Uh, and, uh, I also have the dog here, and I, I read usually in my bed, and so I just couldn't get comfortable to read because I don't have the dog in my bedroom. I don't like that. Um, and, uh, but I did get a little farther in the Witcher books since the last time I talked about them. Uh, I thought it had turned the corner. Um, the chapter immediately after the last chapter I talked about, uh, switched back to normal Witcher for a hot second. Uh, and we went back to Geralt, and Geralt, um, has started to come to the conclusion that there's some kind of, um, charm where they're at. Charm? Is that the word I want? A gaius? Um, a spell? Let's go with that. A spell cast on them that makes them want to stay where they're at even though he wants to leave uh, and every time he thinks he wants to leave he finds something else to do and so they finally finally got to the point where he was leaving uh, and he uh, there was a sorceress there who might have been behind it and he um He, uh, tells her where the bad guy's castle is before he leaves, and then they, uh, she goes back and tells the other sorceresses what he told her, and then it turns out to have been a lie. Uh, and that he, in fact, um, did not reveal the location of the bad guy's castle. Uh, and that was the that was the end of of the part that seemed to fit back into the books. And then we take an abrupt shift, and the next couple of chapters were that I read. Uh, I don't know how many it was, but it's more than one chapter. Is back to Siri, uh, which which should be in the books as one of the main parts. I do not disagree with that. She is the focal point of the series, I guess. Um, sort of. Here and there, every once in a while. That shouldn't be in there. Um, and, uh... So, the last time uh, we saw a Siri... Uh, I want to say the last time I saw Siri, she had... Um, She had uh, gone through a portal, and then they did this whole segment with the Lady of the Lake, and um, and then I'm just gonna take all those bullets. All right, I'm gonna head back out. I think and grab some more. Metal and bits. Uh, 
And um, so she goes through this portal. And that's the last you see of her, I think, last book. And so now she's returned this this book, finally. And the portal she went through did not take her home. Uh, the portal she went through took her... I don't even know why this would be a thing you would choose to do. I don't understand this author at this point. I don't understand the choices he makes when writing his series. So, so once again, we've got The Witcher. We've got Siri. Uh, the Witcher... Oh, man, I was going to knock down this tower, but I'm not knocking down... I'm going to knock down one of these blocks to see what it looks like. Uh, so you got the Witcher, um, he, he winds up with Siri as this destined child, they keep telling him how their destinies are intertwined, and all this stuff, and then, uh, uh, he tries to do something with Siri, uh, turn her into a Witcher, and then involve sorceresses once she reveals she has magic, and they keep telling her that, you know, she's this end of the world bringer and um stuff like that uh which is all great um right okay so it's just a cement block all right so that's not metal i was gonna knock that down as metal i guess i could take these down and um and then uh and then they have the big you know fight that separates Jennifer, Geralt, and siri and then things just go weird from that point. Uh, uh, Geralt kind of goes looking for Ciri. Uh, I mean, he does go looking for Ciri, but he doesn't know where to look. Um, Yennefer disappears, and Ciri runs off with a group of thieves. Fine, whatever. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> and then she goes through the portal. Oh, gross. I just want to make sure I had taken out the electronics in this building. I did. Uh, and so she winds up in a completely different world. Oh, man. Where'd you guys come from? I don't know how they didn't hit me. Um... And, uh, completely different world from the one she's in for whatever reason he decided. I, I, I don't like the particular choice at that moment. Um, and then, uh, you know, this place might have some. It also might have some really bad zombies. I don't know where my base, uh, my bed is at. No, there's nothing in this room. I feel like there should be some computer systems in the bunker, yeah? Oh. Hi, guys. Oh, no, don't, don't. Dang it. Oh. Let's hope my bed's not too far away. I should have known that was just going to be a horrible thing. Although, things spawned in weird on me. I'm I'm not taking the full blame for that one. Uh, spawn near the bed, because I don't... Oh, you put me on top of the roof. I don't want to be on the roof of a building, man. Did I put my bed up here on this roof? No, I don't think so. <laughs> You're nothing special. Uh, yeah, so I'm not even close to home now. Great. So, 
so um yeah anyways to wrap up what i'm talking about here uh so so she's in this Arthurian world where she talks to the Lady of the Lake and Sir Galahad, and then she rides off, and then she disappears. And I'm like, ugh, can we can we just go back to the actual story? I don't understand this weird side trip to the Arthurian legends that have nothing to do with the book. I don't care. I do not care that one time in the books someone referred to Yennefer as Guinevere. It does not tie you to the Arthurian legends. Um, at no point in this series has anything even nodded toward King Arthur or the Round Table or the Knights or any of that stuff. There's no magic sword. There's no Grail. I've read somebody said that Siri was supposed to represent the Grail. Yet, yeah, no, that's that's just no. Um, and uh, so I'm like, well, all right, next book. And then I find out next book is the last book. So I'm on book seven which is the end of the story because book eight is a prequel apparently. And, uh, and so book seven starts off with the lady of the lake and some other people who've never been in the story before, who have not been in the story since their chapters ended, who added nothing to the story, um, fill up like a couple of chapters of blah 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 because it had nothing to do with the story no impact on the story nothing i don't understand what they're in there for the i mean i'll admit it i've not finished the book yet but once again at no point in this seven books six six books and a bit more has any part of it that wasn't directly arthurian legend people has any other part of the story been related to the Arthurian legend? I don't get it. Uh, and so then uh, uh, we get past that. We get to Geralt and doing some Witcher stuff and talking to some, you know, crazy creatures that you run into as a Witcher and trying to escape from this kingdom that's apparently got them in Uh And then we switch back to Siri. And Siri who had left the book to go home, uh, entered the portal, uh, re-enters in book seven as a prisoner in a story I'm pretty sure I am 90% certain I have read a story about this before that was not The Witcher. Uh, Siri is being held captive by elves. Not the elves from the Witcher books. I mean, I guess they're in the Witcher books, so they are the w elves from the Witcher's book. Not elves from the Witcher's world. Let's put it that way. Um, but elves from a different world. And now that we're in the end story, um, apparently, apparently the elves in this book, the elves of the Ash Woods or something like that, um, had gained power over the teleportation system between worlds and had been using it to conquer worlds. And this is one of the worlds they conquered. And then someone took that ability away from them. And so they're trapped here by unicorns uh, for whatever reason. And... Um, uh, Siri had met and rescued a unicorn at one point in the books, and um, so they they play a little bit in the story here, and so they want Siri to have a child with their king because, and I can only infer this because it's not explicitly stated. But I have to assume what had happened was while they were able to teleport, one of their people teleported to the same world with the elves 
who are on the Witcher's world and stayed with those elves and Ciri is a descendant of those two elvish bloodlines as well as human and so I can only infer this because the text says um, they took one of ours and you're going to replace her Um, and so I'm pretty sure this is a story I've read before elsewhere and uh and so then siri um doesn't want to because she wants to go home because people need her she thinks and uh, so they tell her that uh once she gives them a child uh they will um send her back before or at the moment that she left so she won't lose any time and so she agrees, and then the king won't touch her. And this is the part I distinctly remember from, I, I not distinctly enough to know what story it came from, but I do remember a whole thing with uh, trying to get this uh, person to have a baby with an elf, and then the elf refusing to touch her because she's not an elf. Uh, and uh, he can't stand her because he sees the person's eyes looking back at him, who he remembers, but it's coming out of her disgusting human form. And so he won't touch her. And, uh, and then they want, they want her to give the King a potion to, uh, force him to have sex with her. And then, uh, she shows up and he has poisoned himself. And I, I know I have read this before, so I don't know where, I have read, not specifics, but I've read this story of the elf and and not having the child that they're supposed to be agreeing to. Um, and then the king winds up poisoned. And then Ciri goes on the run because now there's two other elves uh, who are involved who want her to have a child with them instead. Because apparently the baby will have the ability to reopen the portals for the elves. And Siri already has the ability, but she refuses to acknowledge it or use it or something. And uh, and so then she meets back up with the unicorns and they push her on her way. And that's the last thing I read. And I'm just like, okay, I'm going to need some time to get over the fact that you've introduced a whole slew of new characters who will not have any relation to what has already happened. Not only do you already have elves in this book, why do you need to add a second group of elves? They've never been mentioned before. Uh, they, the, the woman that she's descended from is revered by multiple groups in the earlier books. They've already given her backstory of where her genealogy comes from. Why add another layer at this point? She's already not doing anything. You're, you try to make her out like she's super important, but she's never done anything in the book ever. I I don't understand. It's not going anywhere. Hmm. I've read lots of high fantasy book series, massive book series. I've read book series where the books are so big that two of them would encompass everything that's happened in the Witcher series. Um, and their characters do something because there's a point. And I just, why are you adding so much to the story? I can only assume that should the TV series, the Netflix series, get to this point in the story, that none of this elf stuff is going to make it. I just assume they're going to strip all this stuff out of here so they can focus on the actual whatever story is supposed to happen. I can't imagine them adding in Arthurian legend stuff into a story where it doesn't mean anything. Uh, So... Oof, I, I'm afraid this is going to be a Stephen King ending, is what I'm afraid at this point. Um, what I mean by that is, sometimes Stephen King can write a good ending. Most of the time, 
it's not. Uh, things just go unbelievably weird at the end of his books. And uh, uh, I give you a couple of quick examples. Uh, the book The Stand uh, is a book about the end of the world. Uh, a disease comes through and kills like 90% of the population of the planet. And those in North America uh, who survive gather into two camps. One camp around a good figure and the other group around a bad figure. Uh, the good figure uh, is in like Colorado, I think. And the bad figure is in Los Angeles. And to try and stop the bad people from coming to the good people, um, some of the good guys go and try to reason with them. Um, and so it's all coming to a head where they're like captured and all this stuff. And like c commando group, I think is trying to break him out. It's been a while since I read it. What I do remember is that all this is the story, right? All this stuff is what's going on. And, uh, all right, let's make sure the gun is loaded. Wow, I totally didn't even hit that guy. Dude, you're not part of this. Alright, that's better. And, uh... And so the whole time the story's been going on, they tell this other story about this guy, uh who's part of the bad group who has discovered a nuclear bomb and he uh, he brings the nuclear bomb back and then um, the hand of God comes down and sits off the nuclear bomb to wipe out the bad guys like what? what was the point? I don't mm. and then uh, the other one the other one that I cracked me up when I got to the end of the book was um uh, I mean, it's not the only two. It happens often. But uh, uh, the other one I can think of off the top of my head that was really bizarre was uh, The Dome. Uh, the Dome was a series where a, uh, a dome uh, suddenly appears over top of a city and some of the surrounding area. And so the whole book is about... is about um, the people fighting against each other over the supplies and the lies and, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, uh, and so it's pretty... Ooh, steel boots. I might not have steel boots yet. Um, it's pretty good uh, until you get to the end. Um, uh, and then at the end, they do the cartoon thing where... Uh, the um, the dome is uh, an alien device, which is fine. I didn't have a problem with that. That was that was fine for the story. Um, but the thing that made it weird was uh, like these kids find it, and they finally lead some adults to it. And so you think you're finally going to find out what. What's going on? I just try to get in this truck to drive it away. Uh, and uh, instead, what happens is uh, it turns out that the dome was activated by alien children playing with some of their parents' devices. And the parents are like, tiss, 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 children, and take the dome away. Uh, and I'm just like, are you serious? That's like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Uh, your ending is a Bugs Bunny cartoon. What the heck? Um, but yeah, it's just, it's abrupt and not pleasing because you put a lot of work into reading 
the story and the author has put a lot of work into building up things and then it's like they don't know what to do once they get there and so then they just throw down on the paper an ending and call it good um so yeah it, it's not like this is the only guy i've ever read who falls apart toward the end in my opinion um but such a shame because I really enjoyed the whole Witcher mythology, and then you know I got a whole bunch of this stuff right here I could be undoing, uh, and then just to abandon it basically for your last two books of the series, uh, like there's no great coming to realization for Geralt that his life is wrong or anything like that. None of that really happens. He's just like, I'm no longer a witcher because I've got other things too important to do. Oh, wait, you need me to be a witcher? Okay, I, I'll do witcher stuff again. Um, oh, but I must stop being a witcher and go on to save Siri. Oh, wait, that's you got another witcher thing for me to do? Okay, I'll stop and do that witcher thing. But I must go on to save Siri. Oh, you need me to do witcher again. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just like, do something. Just do something. I, I feel like you're just dragging it on at this point. I mean, he didn't, because obviously he stopped writing them back in the 90s. Um, so... I don't know. I just... <laughs> I guess I like a story where there's a, a build-up and I uh, get a, a good conclusion. Like... I don't know. I, I don't know what to compare it to, I guess. Uh, but anyways, I need to go. So be better than the small things. Leave it in the light. I will talk to you later.